on Kayomi and John Sweet and never say, you are welcome to Shima Show. Bring her, greet, 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 greet. All right. Okay, my name is Wemi Daniel Prince. I'm the founder and CEO of WTH We Recycle and Web Tech Hub as a whole. Ever since I was a kid, I had always loved to solve problems. So much so that I always spoil my father's laptop in the documentation and also his desktops. So, with my love of solving problems, I always go to the council, I do charitable work with them, cleaning the toilets, cleaning the road paths, and also picking up waste. So when I left from there and I came to Douala, I decided to do this at a bigger scale, picking debt through um, the pandas, taxi cam, and also at Ansha with the team that God blessed me with. So I came to I came and real, I realized that there are three main ways that we could actually recycle and earn a lot from it. One of these ways is electronic waste, which we can extract gold from this electronic waste. We also have the toilet waste, which most of us know what our landlord do here in Duala when rain is falling. They open that small hole and the thing is passing. So <laughs> and I also came to realize of plastic waste. Plastic waste, and which is what I'll be pitching on today. Did you know that around 20 million tons of plastic is being dumped every year in the world, and only about 6% of this 20 million ton is recycled? Also, established by the Ministry of Environment, we have six million of we have six million we have six million tons of unrecycled waste, and producing at least not less than 10% of these six million tons daily. And it has a lot of negative effects on us. First, it kills terrestrial wildlife, it kills ocean life. And let me shock you, it also affects our health. There is a lot of chemical pollution in this plastic. For example, we have carbon monoxide. What does carbon monoxide do? Carbon monoxide do any time that we inhale this, it goes right in our health. Stopping oxygen from reaching our blood. We also have the Benzene, what does it do? What does benzene do? It's very simple, even though very, very dangerous. Here's what it does. Anytime that we inhale it, it goes right deep, deep, weakening our bones. Sometimes, if you have noticed, when you are in a place that you have dumped, and you take some top, you feel some uh, light weaknesses on your skin. Most of it are plastic because if you live here and you are going maybe to wrong point, to wrong point, you will see a lot of plastic waste along the way. Am I lying? No. Am I lying? No. Okay, with this is where where take up recycle came in. Recycling this to what you can see here, please. The other sample. With what you can see here, here was my first sample in the house. Here was my second. Here was my third, producing it to root ties, and I have the marketable product, which has been made from plastic, not sand This has been made from plastic. With our team, we have been working hard to recycle this. And we are not only trying to recycle it, we are trying to recycle it into products that can stay on a longer period of time. Because reducing sometimes affects us a lot, but when we produce this, it stays for a longer period of time in our roots. And it be, it's far more stronger, more than the root, the root pavement. If I take this, I put on the floor 10 times with the other one, you see, this one will still be there looking at you. So with this, we decided to walk in and having research, working with some people to do, produce this that you see right here. All right, here is what we'll be able to do with the one million. We'll use 200,000 francs to buy a plastic crushing machine because we currently we use scissors to cut this and the process of it is very, very low. We will also use 200,000 francs to buy the plastic heating machine where we'll use it to mix sand and plastic for, for structuring. We we'll use 300,000 francs to buy to get a working space at Bigoko because currently our working space is so so small, which hinders our production. So I wish I wish to take this opportunity to thank Shima Show for this opportunity, and I would like to receive any questions from our students. Questions? Thank you very much. Yes, earlier we were talking from sand, you know, I don't you, you said the plastic with a mix carbon monoxide, is that what you said? Yes, sir. How? When 
the plastic waste is being dumped, yeah. it also mixed with other chemicals. Yeah. And once we inhale it, it goes right in our health. No, I know. But I was asking how it produces carbon monoxide. The cars are driving outside. Every time you burn gas, it produces carbon monoxide. Yeah. When you burn plastic, it produces carbon dioxide. So I'm not understanding how you're talking about carbon monoxide. Okay, fine. So, currently, this is a business. It's very good for the, it's, it's all about sustainability. It leads to a greener edge. Great project. Yes, but at the end of the day, this is a business competition. You need to talk the numbers. How much investment are you putting into this now? How much bricks are you producing per month? And how much money are you making per month? And it would be nice to also say, okay, this is where we are today. If we take the one million, this is where we'll be. We'll produce this number of bricks. We'll generate this amount of money every month. Okay. So last month, last year, we were able to gather around 50,000 francs from this. Then around December, we had a problem, which was getting the crushing machine. Because sometimes just to produce this tree that you see right, right, right here, it can take us around five hours just to cut it. So which I had to hold uh, production and raise, and I've been raising some funds to about 280 something thousand francs, which I intend to get a plastic crushing machine. I've already contacted the supplier and also a plastic kitchen machine. So about my target, what I intend, my goal is to make at least more than 2.5 million francs by December next year. Yeah, we didn't answer my question. I'm asking how much you, how many bricks you produce per month now? How much you sell them? How much profit do you make from okay. them? And when you get this money, how many bricks do you produce per month? And how, at how much do you sell and at how much profit do you make per month? We can see the change, the progress. That one million can be in the business. Okay. The bricks is sold for 250 francs. Actually, I have never, um, ever produced on large scale before. I've never produced on large scale before. So, if I'm able to get the one million francs, there's a projected 100,000 francs just to gather the raw materials through my campaigns. Because we always have campaigns everywhere, everywhere next day. Getting a chip of sand, which should be around 70,000 francs. And if I'm able to, that chip of sand can produce me at least more than 1,000 bricks which can be sold at 250,000 francs. In what time frame? Anyway, this is for you, listen. Um, it's nice to know, okay, if I produce this number of bricks per month, I will sell this number and then give me this amount of money. This way, it's easy for investors to know. If they inject the amount of money, this is how much growth you experience. And you really need to know that. Yes, sir. I think you have a very good idea, and, uh, but I have some concerns. My first concern is I would like to understand the production process. Okay? How do you melt the plastic to realize a product like what you have on the table? Uh, my concern is you can be trying to uh, protect the environment and you rather end up destroying it, so I want to understand the process. The second question is uh, I understand your main raw materials at the, mo at the moment is uh, plastic waste. But I'm afraid if you are relying mainly on plastic waste in the next couple of years, you go out of business. Because so many people are now very aware that you don't have to use plastics and throw them everywhere. So, uh, are you thinking about sustaining Victoria business in the next? Yes, sir, I'm thinking about that. First, let me answer how I, I come about this. Firstly, I have two campaigns. After I do the campaigns, I bring it, cut it into scissors, then mix it with sand using a pot, a, a little charcoal pot to heat it through it. And first of all, I make sure that the sand is very, very dry because if the sand is not dry, you won't have this 
uh, sharp shape. Then after it has heated, I mix it around on fire, and I turn it into a mold, which produces this. So about the sustainability of the business, I've also been working on a project which I've not yet uh, finalized, which is also getting cement, producing cement on the long term to continue the, the production cycle. If you go to cement production, it's no longer because you have the which is producing this out of Okay, so you rather go to cement production, so if you are using cement rather, you are no longer doing this product, you are doing something else. So you should look at a long term strategy. And this one is best response, I understand that uh, the current process is not the best because you end up bending plastics. So if you have a way of melting these plastics without bending them, it will really be better. So you think about that. Yes, sir, that's why we need a plastic heating machine which that you don't need to burn into the open air everything is inside and is heating from inside <laughs> yeah. uh yeah just one quick question from me have you actually registered this business yes my business registers i registered it back in july because that was part of my plan from december since i wanted to start producing on large scale from from this December 2022, due to a long process that was taking me to produce one bricks. So that was part of my plan, which I succeeded recently last December, and my company went to get that. Okay. What is your background? Okay, uh, I'm from New Dongaman. No, uh, from a distinct professional, from a distinct professional, <laughs> from, from a distinct professional, yeah, <laughs> academic. Okay, yeah. Actually, first of all, I'm a school dropout. I had to sacrifice my education to my sister since my father could not support the two of us. So I ended my school at um, the advanced level studying from home. I wrote my ordinary level from home. I wrote my advanced level from home. From there, I engaged myself in some online studies because I'm also a graphic designer and some online studies on nature and also digital marketing. 